So what we call galactic recycling, or what your textbook calls galactic recycling, is, is nothing more than kind of what we call, talked about clear back in Unit 1 in this, in, this, in this class, when Carl Sagan said that we are made of star stuff. So galactic recycling goes something like this, where um, within a galaxy we have uh, groups of um, these clouds, these nebulous materials, and within nebulous material, we can get stars to be born. And oftentimes, stars are born in clusters, open clusters or, or globular clusters. But um, so within the same uh, nebula, we can have multiple stars to be formed. And then kind of looking at individual stars, depending upon their mass, they will age um, quickly or slowly. But ultimately, um, via fusion in their cores and sometimes in shell fusion and sometimes during a supernova type 2 event or type 1a event we get heavier and heavier elements um, that is as a star dies basically it gives that material back to new stars to be be potentially born out of that material heavier and heavier elements so um, the next few slides kind of talk about this um, galactic recycling um, with some some photos. So this is uh, kind of showing you where um, uh, stars that are, uh, this says massive stars can have these strong stellar winds. Remember like the sun has solar wind and so um, stars, and the sun is a medium sized star so you can think of a, a more massive stars having a lot of this wind that actually can stimulate stars to be born in nebula around it. This is showing you a, uh, a planetary nebula um, where, remember that's, we talked about in an earlier chapter where a, a relatively low mass star has ended its life basically as far as fusion and its core is concerned and it's uh, just the material that it's kind of created over the years um, outside of its core kind of just drift off into a variety of shapes, planetary nebula. This is actually showing you a, the, the aftershock or the material that was left after a supernova type 2 event. And we call that a supernova remnant. And remember, these would have that cloud there, that nebula, would have relatively heavy, el heavy elements that could be used to, to make other stars. Okay, and again, a supernova remnant. And supernova remnants need to... Um, Cool, cool down over time before we can have new stars to be born within them. And this is kind of an interesting little slide showing you that if we have kind of see these, uh, these massive stars within the disk and they live short lives and they, they go out energetically in a supernova type 2 event, then actually what they can do is they can, their material, their remnants, can actually be ejected outside of the disk, the, um, the, gal the disk of the galaxy, and then as it cools down, it can be um, gravitationally, will be pulled back down often into the disk and kind of scatter the disk with heavier elements. Isn't that kind of neat? Galactic recycling. Um, and we talked about the different temperatures needed for uh, matter to kind of settle down into. So, for instance, ionized matter needs to cool down before it can make uh, what we call molecular hydrogen. And then that material needs to cool down even farther uh, before we can make um, compounds like H2O and, and um, CH4 and that sort of thing. So this is showing you, if you haven't had a chance yet, I hope one of these days you will take, take an, the opportunity to look at the nebula in Orion. So Orion is a happening place. Remember, Orion has these four kind of um, stars near the guy's uh, shoulders, the bottom of his toga. Um, this is his belt, and he has a sword region here. Now the sword actually is a Messier object 42 and it's a stellar nursery so new stars are being born there out of out of old stars basically so this um, galactic recycling we know for a fact that it's happening within the Milky Way so this is I think the Eagle Nebula and again it's a stellar nursery what I like about this is you can almost kind of see where these stars 
that have uh, um, turned on are kind of blowing um, with their stellar winds kind of making dents in that molecular cloud. Isn't that beautiful? So to kind of summarize galactic recycling, it depends on where you want to start. <laughs> but if we just start here talking about how stars can make heavier and heavier elements by fusion, either in their cores or in the, their shells of the cores, um, they will eventually, they, stars don't live forever, although remember the lighter stars live a lot longer than the more massive stars. But they will give their material back to the universe, or more specifically back to um, uh, the the star formation process in the galaxy that they were they lived in. The material needs to cool down, um, and gravity will should kick in, and uh, we get these protostars. And then, if there's enough material, then we can get uh, uh, stars that go ahead and create nuclear 